Today we're thrilled to have with us members from our community who are going above and beyond. Mrs. Evangeline Duras and Mr. John Kaiteris have made an enormous impact on our community. As the chairwoman of the board of Hannock, Mrs. Duras has spent the past 18 years guiding the organization that aims to serve the needs of the vulnerable populations of New York City. The dream of her late husband, Mr. George Duras. Mrs. Evangeline Duras has kept her husband's legacy alive through all of her charitable work. Mr. John Kaiteris has been the CEO of Hannock since a year after its creation in 1973. Having a master's degree in social work from Columbia University, Mr. Kaiteris is an expert in community relations and was a former president of the New York City Council of Senior Centers and Services of New York City and the Queens Interagency Council on Aging and a former chairman of the Queensborough Council for Social Welfare. So we're very happy to have you here. Thank you for being with us and for our Greek speaking population. We're just going to make a short intro. Σήμερα έχουμε την τιμή να φιλοξενήσουμε δύο εκλεκτά μέλη τη κοινότητα με μεγάλη προσφορά. Πρόκειται για την κυρία Ευαγγελία Δούρη και τον κύριο Γιάννη Καϊτέρη. Από το 1995, η κυρία Δούρη είναι στο τιμόνι ενό οργανισμού που εξυπηρετεί τι ανάγκε των ευαίσθητων κοινωνικών ομάδων τη Νέα Υόρκη. Με αυτόν τον τρόπο, κράτησε τον Τανό το όνειρο του αείμνηστου συζυγού τη Γεωργίου Δούρη, τιμώντα τη μνήμη του μέσα από το έργο τη. Ο Γιάννη Καϊτέρη θα ανέλαβε διευθύνων σύμβουλο στο Χάνεκ το 1973, ένα χρόνο μετά την ίδρυσή του. Με σημαντικές σπουδές στις κοινωνικές και πολιτικές επιστήμες στο Columbia και στο New York University, ο κύριος Καϊτέρης έχει άρισες γνώσεις στις κοινωνικές σχέσεις και έχει θητεύσει σε σημαντικά πόστα κορυφαίων οργανισμού της Νέας Υόρκης. Welcome to our studios. Thank you so much for being with us. We're very happy to have you and present these wonderful things that Hannock has done for our community. Well, we're delighted to be here and thank you so much for inviting us. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, we're very happy to tell you all about Hanek and all the services. We'd like to know what the acronyms of Hanek stand for, uh, Mrs. Duras. Hellenic American Neighborhood Action Committee. And what initiated this organization? I mean, Mr. George Duras has started this uh, mm -hmm. uh, over 41 years ago. What was the intention of Hanek? Mr. Duras began it actually before 41 years. It was an idea. Uh, that he had because there were no services for the Greek people in those years. Um, in the 70s when the immigration, the influx of, of immigrants uh, were coming in, there were no services at all for Greeks. Yeah. He was um, a journalist at uh, City Hall in Room 9, which is the press room, and um, uh, the Greek community thought he was a politician and any time there was a problem, they would send people to him asking for a job or for their, uh, for their parents, for their children. And he was inundated. So at that time, it was um, uh, Mayor Lindsay. And he went to Mayor Lindsay and told him, look, we're not all shipline owners. The Greeks are not all shipline owners. They we need help. We, we need, need to do help. something we to help them. do something. Yes. And, uh, and that, that's how it began. Uh, John can tell you more. Mr. Kateri, you've been part of this since day one. And, yes. and uh, what a great man Mr. Juris was. I'm sure everybody used to knock on his door. They used to call him the Dean of Room 9 in yes. City Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, and tell us a little bit about him and his personality. Yeah. Jana, uh, Hannock and George Juris can be summed up as a response to need. Mm -hmm. George, if you had a problem, you went to him because you knew that he would do everything possible to help you. We even had a mother once who had a son in prison upstate that nobody would relate to. He did. And he helped her get up there and to see and have communication with mm -hmm. the son. So he predominantly so, helped the Hellenic population, the Greek population. Initially, that, like, yes. Initially, yes. But when he started Hanek, he always said that we needed to be part of the bigger New York right. and we should respond to need from wherever it came from. But what he understood in, in America is to get resources for your own community, you get resources from the state. So he took public funds, and that enabled us to have the staffing and resources to serve the community. And initially, it was, as Mrs. Doris said, in response to the influx of new immigrants. The laws had changed in the right. 60s. Right. So there was this huge influx of new Greek immigrants and their families. And they came to Astoria, but there was no resources to assist them. What services were created uh, for the Greeks that first came over from, uh, through Hannock? What, what were the initial needs? 
Uh, the senior citizen was the first. Well, I, I ESL. think though ESL. The English ESL, language yeah. I thought I would right. think would be ESL, the first. Right. ESL was the first, and then uh, the senior, uh, senior citizen. Senior services. Yes. In our first so what would year. happen? You would rent rooms and, and teach English. I have to tell you a story that was uh, very interesting. I tell this story all the time. People laugh. Um, one reason George recognized that there was such a need for um, seniors because his mother was an elderly woman and had no place to go, uh, no socialization. She would be home and waiting only for her family to come and uh, socialize with her, take her out. Well, as it turned out, there was a funeral home nearby, and she and her friends occasionally would gather at the funeral home to socialize, and even though they didn't know who died, they would be there uh, talking and crying about, uh, you know, and this was like their senior center. So and they needed a they place needed to just get together. To, right. Because what we forget is, you know, our, our, our um, the, the Greeks in Greece have neighbors, family, Correct. more accessible right, extended to them. Family. In America, it's different because the community is so diverse, mm -hmm. the Greeks aren't next door, so they do need a place to convene or to get together and just have company. Right. And, and that is what I think is still missing. Um, but that is why, well, we, we have so many, uh, uh, John will tell you all about the, the services that we provide to our seniors. We have an enormous, any, any day we feed anywhere from 500 people a day, more free that. of charge, more, more, more of that. Uh, we have many senior centers, uh, senior housing, and for lunch, we feed over 500 people every single day, free of charge. Free of charge. Yes. So at all of your Hannock centers throughout the greater New York State area, a senior citizens can come in and eat for free during lunch. Right. And dinner? No, no, only lunch. Just lunch. Yeah. And do they uh, the present program, something? Do they become members? Do they, they have to become members, yes. Right. This is important, and a lot of people aren't aware of this. I mean, and, and this is the reason that we're, we're, we have you as guests. I, I, I felt the need to share. Uh, when I really found out what Hannock was doing, I thought, this is great, because we here at the channel, we receive a lot of phone calls. And mm -hmm. a lot of senior citizens are asking us for help. So that's why I reached out to you. I thought it would be important for to get the awareness out to a lot of senior citizens that there are so many wonderful programs that you all can be part of through Hannock. Mm -hmm. And you can reach out to Hannock, whether a telephone or online. We're going to provide all these numbers for you uh, on our screen right now. And um, I'd like to go back to a little bit about the services in general. So Hannock began with English language services. Do these English language services still continue today? Yes. yes. In fact, in our first year, we focused on new immigrants, seniors, and youth programs. There were a lot of families and children, right. and there were gangs in the area. Gangs, there, back in New York. And there yeah. were drugs under the elevated subway. So uh, parents were very concerned about youth programs. I think one of your producers played soccer in one of our youth programs, Nicholas Oh, Lavis. Nicholas Lavis. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> And it happened to be at the site that we have the Archbishop Iacomo yeah, senior resident. Right. <laughs> uh, but in that first year, uh, we developed the English as a second language services for the immigrants. That led to workforce development, job workforce development, de so you and job the placement. Get jobs. Yes, and job training. Job training, English language, job training, and youth programs. So pull the kids off the street, teach the Greeks how to speak mm -hmm. English and also get them jobs. This is amazing, and this goes on today. Yes, yes. and immigration legal services too. So if you have difficulty with immigration, well, we that's can counsel very important. you and yes. provide that, you right. some legal yeah. consultation and as well. And that pertains to today's new migration. A lot of Greeks have come to the United States from Greece seeking uh, jobs. So this is another wonderful service that Hannock offers for all of you watching. Mm -hmm. Tell all your friends and, and of course, uh, reach out to Hannock. They can help you with your immigration problems. This is wonderful, wonderful. And this is all free. All yes. free services. Yes. So all our this is amazing. Are free. This yeah. is amazing. And, and uh, we're going to you know, help you guys and put, us, put your uh, services also on our website. You can also reach out into New Greek TV to find out more about Hannock. Um, other than these kind of programs, how many buildings uh, do you do for affordable home, uh, I'm sorry, housing? Right. Well, in serving the elderly for many years, <clears throat> we recognized that you really couldn't stabilize a senior's life without affordable housing and secure housing. 
So we committed ourselves to developing affordable senior housing that was affordable, first of all, secure, and that it would have access to services as they need them, as they age in place. Because everyone at some point in their life is going to need some assistance. Yes. And ideally, um, to include a senior center, which included a nutritional lunch, um, recreational and socialization, and as you said, Yana, a place to go. People, seniors need to have a place to look forward to. There is a place that I can go, that I can socialize. Even if I don't know anyone, I can sit there and be with people. Many men come very early in the morning yes. and play cards. They play cards, yes, yeah. that's a great so, thing. Right, but, <laughs> but it, it's a nice pastime. Absolutely, but you're seeing people, you're yes. socializing, yes. and you're part of something. Yes. And which has become a, a very critical factor, not only for the Greek elderly, but for all elderly. Right. Socialization, yeah. being part of the group. Why don't you make a Hanne Cafe Nio? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, like we, it is like a Cafe Nio. It is like a Cafe Nio. They come and they drink coffee and they play cards. Well, <laughs> I, I have seen a lot of, you know, I, when I walk through the streets of, of this neighborhood coming to work, I, you know, I just love it because I feel like it is Greek town. And you pass by Dunkin' Donuts, and you pass by right. any cafe that exists, and they're sitting there for hours, and they're drinking, and they are playing some cards. So, and the, you know, the uh, Omos Pondies, uh, uh, the federations do have a lot of uh, places for the senior citizens also to come and convene. But Hanuk is another alternative. So I, I think I would like to help you make a, a, a Hanuk Afenu. I think all of the staff here at New Green TV, we're going to We would love do to do it. Please do it's it. A great <laughs> idea. By the way, what we would like, if you have um, people listening who know providers, people who own restaurants or bakeries, if they could donate uh, so uh, let's yesterday's ask for that. food, yes. we can have Cafe Nio, as you said. We're going to do that. We're, right Cafe now, Nio we're hour. asking all our viewers. And weekends. For help, for Hanek also, if you would like to donate, you own a... a, a, a donuts. A, donuts. Uh, muffins. 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 Anything, anything that you can donate. Croissants, anything. That would Any be food product. Yeah. Any food we'll, product. And where do they reach you, uh, guys? Um, um, well, call our central office, 212-840-8005. And how, how does the, how, the affordable housing work? Do, how, does, how does someone submit to be part of this? Okay. Uh, you can go to our website, um, but if you don't have internet capacity, you can call us. It's best, I mean, a lot of our viewers don't have, right. perhaps don't have, the senior citizens don't have internet capacity. Yeah. So what we would like to do is offer them a number that they can call, Porita na parte telefono, sto telefono που βλέπετε τώρα στην οθόνη μας, και να σας βοηθήσει το Hanek με πάρα πολλά ε, προγράμματα ε, και να μπορέσετε να, να λάβετε μέρος στο διαγωνισμό, να μπείτε στα σπίτια που, ή στα διαμερίσματα μάλλον, που είναι πάρα πολύ... Ε, ε, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, affordable in Greek. <laughs> Economica. Economica. <laughs> yeah, I should say this too, though, uh, as a warning. Um, we have uh, very long waiting lists. Yes. Because this it's and such a it's demand a for we affordable have to housing. We have to tell the audience that it's a lottery to get into these um, It's housing. a lottery. So not to expect if they know someone, they're going to call and say, oh, I know correct. Mr. Kaiteri. Yes, yes. <laughs> what we're doing now is we're just taking the name and they're putting on a waiting list. So there's no mess on here. There's no, you don't have to fill an application. There's no mess on, right. no. <laughs> but, but, but I'd also make an appeal, Yana, if any of your viewers know of a potential site for affordable housing right. that they think would be a good idea, we would be very interested in looking at it and mm -hmm. helping develop because there's such a demand. This is important information, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to have had you here today. You've uh, enlightened us on many services that we didn't know were available. I'm sure a lot of our viewers did not know that were available. Uh, and uh, we would love to have you back here again. And perhaps we'll be able to see a Hanuk show in the future here on New Greek Television. Uh, wonderful people uh, hosting and helping people in need uh, for the Greek community and not only. Uh, you are an example to us all and whatever you need, reach out to Hanek and we hope to see you here on New Greek Television again. Thank you for being here. We would love to come back. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Here on 14th, a full service salon that has a professional staff committed to providing a sophisticated, warm environment. 
Our expert stylists use the best products available in the beauty industry today. Come experience our superior techniques in highlights, color, cutting, styling, and more. Our Euro Laser Clinic has certified laser specialists that remove unwanted hair utilizing the Zimmer Cooling Method. JD Opticians, luxury eyewear that keeps your budget in sight. Premier European designers, Chanel, Bulgari, Tiffany, Oliver Peoples, Versace, and more. Personal service prescription eyewear, why you wait. We speak Greek, Mila Melinika. Trust your eyes to the specialist, JD Opticians, for all your optical needs. 15255 10th Avenue, Whitestone, New York. 718-747-2470. Η αυγερινή μουζακή της Φάζιο είναι η ιδιωτήτρια της περίφημης New London Pharmacy στο Chelsea της Νέας Γιώργης. Προσφέρει φαρμακευτικά προϊόντα και καλλιντικά βασισμένα στην παραδοσιακή γιατρική και την ομοιοπαθητική. Παράλληλα, έχει φροντίσει να εξυπηρετήσει πελάτες κάθε εθνικότητας, παρέχοντας υπηρεσίες σε οκτώ διαφορετικές γλώσσες. Αυγερινή μουζακή της Φάζιο and her husband, who are both pharmacists, open New London Pharmacy here in New York City and Chelsea. Their goal is to provide health care benefits through traditional medical services, homeopathy, and natural remedies. Thank you for being with us, Avgerini, and I think your nickname is Abby. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for having me. We thought it was important to bring in a pharmacist to explain to us what are pharmaceuticals, how we should be taking medication, when not to take a lot of medication, and what natural remedies are a good alternative to medicine. There are a lot of alternatives to medicine, and I always suggest that, especially when I see over-medicated elderly patients or when I see a younger person that, in my opinion, in your 20s, you really shouldn't be on high blood pressure medication. There's something else that I can give you in spite of that. What can we tell our older population about medicine? I mean, they, they are a little, I mean, I remember my grandmother used to be a little bit obsessed with her medication. They are, especially right before a rainstorm or a snowstorm. Um, we, because of now, because of automation and a lot of uh, computers, we have, uh, we look at everybody's profile. So if we feel they're getting too many medications or if we feel that they could do without one, we'll suggest it. And we don't really suggest it to the patient. We just, we talk to the doctor. This way, uh, the patient doesn't get frazzled. Uh, and then we also offer, if a lot of elderly are on a lot of medications, for example, diabetes or high blood pressure or heart medication, and at the older you get, you, uh, you confuse when you're, when you're taking it, when, if you took it. Uh, we get a lot of phone calls at night, especially. I don't remember if I took it. Should I take it over? And, and we talk to them about them. And if we feel that they're getting confused, we have something now which we call unit dose and we provide free of charge. And basically, we take their month, monthlies, their medication that they take for the month, and we put it in these weekly things for them. And it's, uh, it's very easy to tear off. And if they're traveling for the day or for the weekend, they just take Saturdays and Sundays, or they take Mondays, and they take it with them. This way, they know that, oh, I did take my Tuesday morning medication. This is wonderful. Yeah. And do you, I mean, do you offer this? Uh, is this something that's offered or it has to be requested? No, no. We offer it especially when we feel that the patient, I know when a, per, a person doesn't take their medication. Obviously, if you're on high blood pressure medication and um, you refilled it last month, uh, but this month you didn't or you're late by two weeks, what were you doing for the two weeks? <clears throat> so that's when I'll suggest it either to the patient or to the patient's family because usually you know when you're older the children step in or a sister or, or somebody or they should step in or they should step in or I will tell them to step in yeah and um, that's how we take care of that and it's been working very well should they be more aware about the expiration dates yes what I always tell my patients is that after a year, whether the medication could be good, let's say, until 2015, but the moment that it leaves the pharmacy where we have the right, um, 
you know, temperature for it. Uh, the moment that it leaves and it goes to your home, it sh it's only good for one year. And then after that, I suggest to throw it away. You can also call in and have it delivered. I don't know if you guys deliver. Yes, we deliver free to uh, all of Manhattan. We do uh, deliver to some places, let's say in Queens or the Bronx, depending on the medication and depending on the patient. Now, what if patients come to you and say, I need a refill without doctor's... Uh, uh, refill we, of um, that hardly happens with us because we're on top of it meaning that when they call in in the morning and um, we see that it doesn't have a refill we immediately without them even asking us call the doctor right now if it's uh, I don't know it's a Saturday and obviously the doctor's not in and this patient has been on high blood pressure for three years on the same medication, I am going to give him two tablets until Monday. Right. You use your discretion, right? Yes. Uh, what about people who are addicted to certain medication? What kind of medication can people become addicted to? It's very easy to become addicted uh, anywhere. Is it pain management mostly? or It's pain management, but it could also be as easy as going to the dentist and you're having some work done and the you know, the work is uh, a couple of weeks and uh, you've been on heavy duty medication, anything that contains oxycodone, uh, that is very easily addicted. And we have had cases like that. And again, it's our discretion and it's up to me, up to us to warn the patient. And if, if we see that the patient is getting addicted, then we step in and we call the doctor. You regulate, yes, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. That's, that's great. That it's, it's very easy nowadays. I mean, you can get addicted to Exlax, something oh, over-the-counter, no. uh, any kind of medicine. Once the body gets used to it, uh, it happens. Let's talk a little bit about what medicine is, uh, how did it begin, about how the pharmacies began. They were usually they were called chemists. I know one of the oldest uh, New York uh, City chemists uh, are, is on Lexington Avenue in the Upper East Side. It's been there since the late. Uh, 1800s, and uh, tell us a little bit about. And now there's there's the generic brands. We want to we want to talk about what it used to be and what it is today. Well, I think back then there wasn't anywhere near the amount of medicine that we have now. A lot of the medicine now is um, man-made, where back then a lot of medicine was um, derived from plants. Derived from plants. The example would be something as easy as digoxin which is from the plant and it's for it's for the heart it's been around for hundreds of years and yet it's still uh, number one for uh, angina that they use um, there's not as many medicinal uh, the way they used to be but they're over the counter now because of nutritionals and vitamins there are a lot of plant derived um, medicine that can be used as long as you know you follow the directions, uh, they do their job. Generic brands, what is the difference when the pharmacist asks you, do you want the prescription or the generic? The brand or the generic. The brand or the generic. Okay. When a, when a manufacturer comes out with a medication, the medication, uh, the generic name is the chemical name of the medication. When the manufacturer spends, I don't know, 10, 15 years in research, on this medication, when it comes out to the public, when it's approved by the FDA, then it has a brand name. And they have, and then they get a patent, whether it's 10 or 20 years. And for that time period, nobody else can make this medicine. When the patent is over, then another manufacturer, and that's usually called the generic manufacturer, will come out with this drug. And according to the FDA, it has to be exactly the same in chem chemically. Okay. But the problem is that many times patients tell me that they're allergic to the coating because they don't, it, that's why a generic and a brand never look alike. So maybe they use a cheaper coating, coating the, the that excipients. Causes, that causes the allergies. Right. So people believe it doesn't work, but it's actually right. working. Sometimes, but sometimes I do believe my patients when they say to me, you know, Abby, I have to take two in order to go to sleep of really? the generic, where one of the brand um, does the trick. And in the beginning, I never used to believe this, but when enough people say it to you, 
I do believe it. Right. Now, the problem is that it's the insurance. A lot of the insurance companies would rather, of course, pay for generic. And as the years are going now, I feel, and what I'm researching and reading, that by the year 2015, most of the, uh, most of the insurances are going to only pay for generic. Oh, my God. Yes. Uh, it's not... That's another topic in it's itself. It's another topic the in itself. Companies. Yes. But going into natural remedies, because okay. I'm a big fan of, you know, I try not to take medication. I was, so am I. I was hit by a car, and I was trying not to take the pain medication. I couldn't stand wow. it. It That's made me hard. sick. It was very hard. It's very hard. But, you know, I, I, I lived through it. Um, and what, let's talk about what uh, vitamins can do for us and what overtake a vitamin can do for us. Well, overdose rather. Yes. Most, uh, when the person comes in and says to me, I, I need to be on a vitamin, I'm going to ask questions. Why do you feel that? Or did your doctor uh, tell you about it? Or in they your just blood read, work? Most people just read it usually, yeah. They're reading a lot it. Of a lot of people, yes. That's why uh, about six years ago, I brought in a, a nutritionist. And her specialty is all these different vitamins and which vitamins to carry because there's so many out there that when a patient comes in, they're overwhelmed. But, so what we did with the nutritionist is basically, because I only have a small section in the pharmacy dedicated to this, we picked for every item the best company. When we go to pick up a, 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 a vitamin uh, bottle, mm -hmm. what should we, we be reading and what are the signs to know the difference of when it's synthetic and it's all natural? Well, it'll tell what you. What will it say? The bottle will say with, if, it's, if it's natural. Because if it's natural, a part of it is going to be derived from a natural source. If, it's not, if it doesn't say that, obviously it's synthetic. So that's what I meant by... Give me an example of a synthetic uh, ingredient. I, I carry alternatives to everything that I carry. Right. So I do carry windmill because it does have a good reputation and it will do the job, but it's not natural. Let's go back to the, the natural part. What, should, what vitamins are essential for everyday living that we might not be getting from our foods today because our foods are genetically modified? I take a lot of supplements. I'll take my multi for women. Um, I'll take my calcium. I'll take my D3 because, you know, everybody in the United States has to take D3. We don't get enough sun. We don't eat right, um, but I also take other things. I take something, uh, I take phytonutrients, which is, uh, it's derived from greens because I don't eat enough greens and research proves that the greens contain so many uh, things in it that- Antioxidants. It, yes, uh, well, I take antioxidants as well, but greens make you live longer. Back to your, your vitamins, you said, you, you said to me you took about I counted about six vitamins. I take about 12. 12. When do you take them? Do you take them all together? I take them in the morning. Uh, I break them. Uh, most of them are in the morning. And I always take them right after I eat breakfast. Not that they bother me, because the more natural the vitamin, the vitamin is, and if it's derived from food, it won't bother your stomach. How See, many that's another. Yes, that's another thing I wanted to ask you. How many hours does it take for the stomach to break down all these vitamins? Because the, these capsule forms are like, there's, there's some talc in there, I've understood. Yeah, uh, about two to three hours. Three hours to break down all the, what about uh, capsule versus uh, soluble? It doesn't, it, you know, it, I, always, I always say about two hours because it depends also on what you're eating and uh, but about two hours, whether it's soluble or not soluble, or I always tell everybody about two hours. And if the patient says to me, you know, Abby, I always get an upset stomach or whatever, I always tell them, don't take it on an empty stomach. And so nutritionists educate. We want yes, you to educate they counsel, counselors. And if, if the patient has uh, a question, maybe it's something that they saw on TV or on the radio and they want to ask her about it, is it worth it? or of course, Dr. Oz, that always every week says yeah, what to take. Yeah, he's wonderful. We love watching him. So, uh, you know, all these questions. And I know you're also a specialist in skin care. And one of the things that we were talking about uh, earlier before getting on is uh, how the skin gives you uh, um, 
signs of, a, of an internal problem? Yes, a lot of uh, people don't understand that. So when they come to me, you know, either they'll be breaking out from acne or have eczema or rosacea, and all that is internal. Uh, so I, have, I question them on uh, not only on their, what they eat and how they live, but also what are they putting on because some of the things that people put on make things worse. Clot pores. Yes. But also usually acne is a sign of either a, a high body temperature or hormonal yes. or polycystic ovary. So it's something that you really have to look into. You have to go see a doctor, not just for a, a topical solution, but it is exactly. an internal problem. But a lot of people still don't know how to wash their face. And the cleanser, whether you're a teenager or a, a middle-aged person, the cleanser is the most important thing out of the whole regimen, in my opinion. Because once you have cleansed skin, you get rid of bacteria, you get rid of pollution, especially if you're in New York, and if, uh, uh, even if you're wearing makeup, especially at night, right, if you don't take off your makeup with a good cleanser, all that stays on all night. So. Well, Abby, my God, you've given us so much information. We'd like to thank you for being with us. We'd love to have you back on our show to continue this conversation. Thank you. Um, we will be back right after these messages for more on Calimera USA. O Dr. Peter Patetsios is a board certified genetic endocrinologist and is working with the Saint Francis and the North Shore University Hospital. The complete exoplasmic surgery of the doctor offers all the therapies of genetic patients, diagnostic procedures for all the arteries και φλεβικών ασθενειών, θεραπεία της φλεβίτιδας με λέιζερ και σκληροθέραπη με εξαιρετικά αποτελέσματα και επεμβάσεις που προσφέρονται στο άνετο περιβάλλον μας. Ο Dr. Πατέτσιος και το προσωπικό μιλούν ελληνικά. Για ραντεβού επικοινωνήστε στο 516-570-6818. Είμαι πολύ επερήφανος που προσφέρω τις υπηρεσίες μου στους ανθρώπους που υποφέρουν. Κάνω το καλύτερο, εύχομαι υγεία σε όλους. Το United Brothers Fruit Market, γωνία 30 Avenue και 33ο δρόμο στην Αστόρια, έχει όλα τα εποχιακά και πευτικά, τόσο φρέσκα και λαχταριστά, σε λαβήκαν από τον κήπο σα. Ανοιχτό 24 ώρε καθημερινά, σε 4.000 τετραγωνικά, προσφέρει μεγάλη ποικιλία από φρέσκα φρούτα και λαχανικά στι καλύτερε τιμέ. Και τώρα, αποκλειστικά για το United Brothers Fruit Market, τοπικέ φάρμε στο Long Island και Upstate New York θα παράγουν για μα εποχιακά φρούτα και λαχανικά, όπω Ραδίκια, αυλίτα, σέσκουλα, ντομάτε, φασολάκια, αγκινάρε, κουκιά και όλα τα φρέσκα μυρωδικά. Ροδάκινα με γεύση Ελλάδο και έντεκα ποικιλίε μήλων στο Apple House μα. Στο κατάστημά μα συνεχίζουμε να προσφέρουμε άριστη εξυπηρέτηση, καθαριότητα, τιμιότητα και εξαιρετική ποιότητα και για του πελάτε μα. 15 λεπτά πάρκι δωρεά. Και μην ξεχνάτε, το United Brothers, γωνία 30 Avenue και 33ο δρόμο στην Αστόρια, ποτέ δεν είναι αργά. Γιατί είμαστε πάντα ανοιχτά. In Flushing, New York, at Mythos Restaurant, we've come to meet Athena Theodoropoulos and Costas Theodoropoulos, who's going to give us a great recipe for Spanakopita, their specialty. And Athena, this is the new Greek town. It's all Greeks here, all Greek, the new generation, young mothers, the school across the street. It's all young, you know, mothers, grandmothers, granddaughters, and they all like the Greek, the to, Greek le to learn how to cook. Mediterranean, you know, we try and all that. All natural, all natural. The yes. moms are passing it down to the daughters and the daughters to their daughters. And this is Northern Boulevard. There's a lot of Greek stores here. There's Oasis, there's the beautiful St. Nicholas Church. There's a Greek barbershop, Greek nails, Greek anything. Everything is Greek here. Gyros, some black places. You gotta check out the new Greek town here, which is in Bayside, Whitestone, and Flushing. So we're gonna go inside and see what Costa has in store for us with the Spanakopita. The master chef Costadinos Adoropoulos, they are from Nafpacto. They're going to give us their specialty here at Mythos. We came here this morning, we invaded their kitchen. We're very excited. We see a lot of fresh vegetables here. What are we going to do, Costadina? We're going to do spinach pie, uh, traditional from Nafpactos. That's uh, grandma's recipe. Yeah, yeah's recipe. Athena, in a specialty. Yes. Yeah. 
This is your specialty and everybody comes here from all over Bayside and, and Flushing and Long Island. Great Neck, Manhattan. Great Neck, Manhattan, just for the, for a lot of things, but <laughs> their specialty. All right, let's see what we have here. Now, we have to talk about this for a second. This is Hiropito, Filo. This is a handmade uh, uh, filo, which is very difficult and men, not many people do this today. And we're going to have to come back for another show with Athena to show, show you us how to, do it. How to <laughs> open filo. Rumeliotico style, let's see, muy Yes. That's what she told me earlier. And we're going to bring all the young girls because we want, all of us want to learn. I'm not young, but the girls are going to be young. All of us want to learn how to open a filo. We have to keep the tradition alive. It's in Athena. Yes. Yes. Right. Costadine, show me how you're going to do this now. Okay. So we start over. Now, when you make the filo, you always have to, the dough, you always yeah. have to keep it covered with uh, alevri? Yeah, a little bit. If it's, it has to be... To keep it uh, so, moist? Yeah, moist a little bit. So we start, we take it in a bowl and we open it up. All right. And put some more flour. So this is going to make a full pan, yeah? Yeah. So it's a little moist. So when you put the alevri, it helps it uh, expand better yeah. without breaking. It doesn't stick. It doesn't stick, exactly. All the secrets, you're going to find them out <laughs> on Calimera USA. And in September, we're going to do more episodes like this with Athena. We're going to do a lot of great episodes for new Nicoquires. <laughs> new generation. New generation Greek American girls and guys, because we have a lot of uh, most of the chefs at the restaurants are men. And young. Yeah. And young, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and from Greece, they're coming over from Greece. But, uh, Costadina, what made you get involved with uh, cooking? Did you always like to, to uh, yeah, cook? Yeah, I was watching my mother and my grandmother do that. In, so, in Napa. So it doesn't stick the filo too. No. It's okay. It's getting a little sticky. And we're gonna do the second part. We're gonna put one more filo. So two filo. Yeah, two filo for down. Yeah, this one is stick. It's okay. Now, can somebody use gluten-free? Does it work with gluten-free flour? It's yes. very fashion these days. No, gluten-free is is uh, has been found to have a lot of nutritional. Uh, benefits instead of uh, wheat. Some people are allergic to wheat. They're, they have celiac uh, disease. So can they open the filo as good with uh, gluten-free? Uh, not really, like this. Yeah. They can open it, but you yeah, can't do it. We can't do gluten-free. Keep it old-fashioned. Gluten all the way. Get it with energy. So tell it me after Costadina, right? This needs a, a lot of practice to do to open up filo. Yeah, like everything else in life, you have to practice a little <laughs> bit. How many years did it take you to become a master? How many years? I've worked in a couple of hotels with different chefs and different people, so I learn from each other different and, stuff. And your specialty and I is mix Greek? It up. Your specialty is Greek? Yeah, Greek, not only Greek. How do you feel about the new type of Greek uh, cooking that they're doing? It's, it's more mixed and gourmet. Do you think that Greek food should be... Should be more mixed? lighter than before. And this is the second filo. Cosadina's going to put on top. You put more olive oil. Yeah, a little bit. Athena and Costadina, of course, what are your thoughts about uh, the modern Greek cuisine that they're mixing it, they're making it gourmet and they're experimenting? I don't believe in mixing the Greek with, uh, you know, any other food. I think it should stay traditional Greek food. Costa with uh, yeah. olive oil, lemon, you know, oregano. Mediterranean, <laughs> keep Mediterranean. it Mediterranean. Less exactly. stuff you put is better. So the exactly. less stuff you put is better. Now, I know the Greek cuisine can be heavy at times. Do you have any advice for the uh, viewers at home about yeah. what type of ingredients they should be using? Fresh ingredients and whatever you will need to fry, don't fry, just put it in the oven, in a pan. Just a little bit of oil, little touches, and put it in the oven. In the oven instead of frying, guys. You heard it from the masters here at Mythos. Whatever is that. Eggplants, chicken, chicken nuggets, french oh, fries, even french fries you can do in the oven. No, it's just not. Yeah. 
And the moussaka, what do we do with moussaka the... Moussaka is in the oven too. That's how we made it. Beautiful. We don't fry it. So now we are moving on. We're done with our filo, the bottom of the filo. It's two coats. Yeah, and we're gonna make another one for the middle. We're gonna split the ingredients in half. So you split the ingredients in half and you do two layers. Two layers. Ah, oh, I cannot wait to try this. <laughs> This is a specialty, guys. You really have to come out to Mythos here in Flushing. It's located right across the street from St. Nicholas Church. It is an amazing, right after church, just come on over. And for all of those non-Greeks, it's so easy to get here, very easy. You get directions off MapQuest. You're here in 25 minutes from the city. Take a ride out. Visit Flushing, it's got a lot to offer. The new Greek community. It's the new little Athens. And Yana, we come here now. We have all the ingredients, the fresh spinach, the leeks, and the scallions, and dill. You chop eggs, them up? And feta cheese. Then first we chop them up all. We mix them all together. We put inside the eggs. So three eggs. Three eggs inside. Okay, great. And then, uh, and then we take a feta cheese, and we're just gonna break it with our hands. We're gonna break the feta cheese with our hands. Can we buy already crushed, or it's better to buy it fresh? Uh, and some places they have. I don't think all the places they have. So eight feta ounces. Cheese. Yeah, eight ounces of feta. Of sharp feta, Athena. She made it a point to say that to yeah. me. Yana, but is sharp. Yeah, you got some salt in it. You know? Yeah, it's got to have some salt. <laughs> some to have salt. That. Because notice, they're not putting any salt in any pepper. No salt, no pepper. Beautiful. Just the ingredients. Then and olive oil. And olive oil. oil. Again, the olive oil is always in the mix. And beautiful. And we mix everything up and it's in the bowl. Yes, we mix everything up. And we're going to put half of it first. And then we're going to put the filo that we have ready. And the other half on top of it. And then I have to fix two more. So we have, we're mixing it up and then we're gonna put the first layer. Yes, just put it now. Bravo, wow, that's a nice thick layer. Mm. And now we're moving along to make two more filos, yes? Yes, first we're gonna put the middle one. So we'll put the other half of the ingredients. So we want to fill the pan, it right? Looks, it looks very thick, but when it cooks, it's getting very low down because it's fresh, everything. So once everything is cooked. cooking, it, it kind of flattens out. Yes. So you might think it it's kind of full, but really it's, out. it's going to lose a lot of... And here's our second layer, and we're ready for to top it off. How many more layers, Cosadina Filo? Two layers of Filo, and then we cut it and place it in the oven for one hour on uh, 350 degrees, and it's ready to eat. And it's ready to eat, so let's finish it up. So now, Costadina is cutting the edges off the filo. We're cut the edges off, so we put the top ones. So in order to put the top ones, we cut the edges off. What do we do with the extra? <laughs> the extra, you can make another one. Oh, good. And I'm gonna make another one. The filo is okay. Oh, bravo, see, we don't throw it away. No, we don't throw nothing away. Nothing gets thrown away especially food. And we're off to the races with one more. And we're gonna open one more and then close it together. Cut the edges again. So we'll push it with the knife inside.
gonna just cut a little bit on the top. Now we're cutting it for what? For it to breathe? For pieces and for breathe, too. And for, and for the water to... All right, no olive oil on top? Oh, we do put olive oil on top. put a little olive oil on top. Just to make a nice color. Just to make a nice color? Yes. Or it's in a... Nice and crispy. To become nice and crispy. And it's ready for the oven in one hour, ready to eat. Enjoy. <laughs> You're the best, Constantine. Nafak tostao spinach pie. Right here at Mito's restaurant. In one hour, we're gonna, we're gonna eat it. Come back <laughs> and try it. Two bags of fresh spinach, four leeks, four scallions, three eggs, one pound of sharp feta, dill, virgin olive oil, and homemade phyllo. Dio shakulis spanaki, tesera prasa, tesera fresca kremidakia, three avga, and a pound feta, anito, agno eleolado, and spitico filo. Athena and I are back. We're ready to eat. I know she eats it every day, but I'm waiting wait. to eat for an hour. I think I'm ready to take okay. it out. So you guys ready. gonna enjoy it. Okay. Wow. Popo, this keep is the pie. It was up and I was almost half down. You notice so. when he make it, how it was like up to here? But as you cook, it goes down because everything is fresh and it's all water. Uh, you know, it flattens up, but it was flattens out, but it looks fantastic. Let's cut a piece. Yeah. <laughs> Peter screaming in the background. <laughs> Athena's husband. <laughs> that looks awesome. See, the pieces are kind of pre-cut, so it's easier to cut. And you notice how crispy it is that when he cuts it, it's you, you hear the crispy. Is that because of the that's, olive oil? That's the olive oil, right? Don't put a lot now, but you know, keep on it. Oh, fabulous. Finish pie. Yeah, yeah, style pita pie. Enjoy. Enjoy. I'm gonna enjoy, believe me. <laughs> We're gonna enjoy this, trust me. Guys, thank you so much. We We're very you. happy to, that you were on Calimera USA. We're happy to have you here. We're going to see more of uh, Costa Dinos and I'll Latina. Show you more He's Thanks, gonna, they're going to show us more secrets from uh, Mythos here in Flushing. And you got to come down and try it out because it's an amazing spinach pie. No joke. Totally worth it. Thanks, guys. Thank you again. Κοπιάστε για καταπληκτικό φαγητό. Κοπιάστε για γνήσια κυπριακή κουζίνα. Κοπιάστε για ζωντανή μουσική κάθε Παρασκευή και Σάββατο. Κοπιάστε. Αναλαμβάνουμε και κοινωνικές εκδηλώσεις στην ανανεωμένη αίθουσά μας. Τώρα και free delivery. Κοπιάστε στο 2315 31 Street, Αστόρια, με τηλέφωνο 718-932-3220. Homeric Tools. Πάντα κοντά στην ομογένεια, πάντα με χαμηλότερες τιμές. Homeric Tools, το γραφείο παράδοση που επί σειρά ετών φροντίζει τον Έλληνα ταξιδιώτη με υπευθυνότητα και του προσφέρει ασφάλεια και άνεση στα ταξίδια του. Homeric Tools, το Α και το Ω για τα ταξίδια σας. Για πληροφορίες και κρατήσεις θέσεων, τηλεφωνήστε στο 212-753-1100. Another wonderful member of the community who is doing a lot to promote Hellenism. We have with us Dr. Nikos Alexiou from Queens College, who is the executive director and founder of the Oral History Project, which is a wonderful series of interviews that uh, Nikos has been doing for the past couple of years about the Greek diaspora. 
Nico, thank you for being with us. And we were talking mm -hmm. earlier with uh, Mrs. Duris and uh, Mr. Kaiteris uh, from Hanek, and they were telling us some great stories. And I'm sure some of your interviews are part of uh, this project. Tell us what you're doing. We're very excited to hear about it. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me uh, here. I'm very, very happy to be here. I'm honored. And, um, Everything is wonderful here, uh, the studio, <laughs> your colleagues, uh, the show. Um, We've had you here many times because we really believe in your project. We want to help you promote it. We want to be part of it. We want to help you. This is not only my project. I, I don't want to see it that way. I think this is a project for, for the community. Uh, I, I, I've been teaching at uh, Queen's College since uh, forever, since 1990. So I'm there for 20 plus years. And as you know, Queen's College, uh, the, the physical location of, of the campus, which is in Flushing, um, it is in the heart of, of the Board of Queens. And since the majority of Greek Americans, they still live in Queens. Maybe they don't live in Astoria any longer, but they, they live in they Queens. They live in Queens or, and they've, or, they've or, kind or of migrated Queens. out to Long Island. Yes, slowly. But, uh, but anyway, uh, it attracts um, many students of Greek descent. Every semester you, you find almost 1,000 students of some kind of Greek background. So it is an area, it is a college with a lot of uh, Greek population. So I, I realize that uh, although the Greeks uh, live in or they've been to New York for more than 100 years, the, the, the high immigration starts in, in 1900s. And earlier, I, I remember uh, reading, and, and when we did the documentary on Ahepa, there was uh, the first, first, first migration was during the uh, 1800s. A lot yeah. of the Greeks came but over massively. to work the mines, yes, and yes. the mass yeah. came over in, yeah, in yeah. the 1900s. In, that, so New York uh, is about 100 years or, or, or more, uh, but we don't have um, Documentation. Uh, documentation. We don't have an, an archive. Right, an archive. And this is very striking to me because Astoria, uh, once upon a time, uh, on one hand, it is the symbol of Greek immigration to America. You say Astoria at any given Astoria place. Astoria was Greek town. Yes. <laughs> they, they, uh, everyone has this in mind that Astoria is a Greek place. So it was a city with a lot of Greeks uh, than any other city uh, outside of Greece. So it is striking. Uh, for us not to have um, an archive. Yes, so, and, a, and the Hellenic Museum, I feel, is also important. We need to create a Hellenic Museum. I know that some people mm -hmm. have uh, are trying, and we want to help them with that. And I think we need to unite mm -hmm. as a Greeks abroad to you know, promote and preserve our culture amongst the new generations. This is one of the problems, you know. Uh, this uh, project right now, it is funded by uh, the Stavros uh, Niarchus Foundation. And, uh, we're very thankful for that. Uh, but um, tell me exactly the, the what is the needs. project? What it, tell me how it's being presented. Um, well, uh, it is a long-term project. First of all, uh, teaching at Queen's College, as I said earlier, and being in contact uh, as, as uh, an educator to many Greek American students, and I realize that they don't know a lot about their own community. Do they speak the language? They do, of course. Uh, uh, for good or bad, the, the, the parents, they manage to uh, instill into them uh, this, this zest, this, this, this willingness to, 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 to be Greek. Because they don't have to be Greek any longer. They are Americans yeah. of Greek background. It's not the, the immigrant generation that, you know, in any way they were Greeks, de facto. But this generation, this is an American generation. And therefore, uh, the parents did such a great job uh, all these uh, younger people, they, they, they do love whatever is Greek. Sometimes this is good, sometimes it's bad, because they need to have also some criteria, what is higher Greek uh, culture, et cetera. But it doesn't matter. That is something that we're, we're going to solve. Actually, you do that here. Uh, one of the major social uh, uh, agents, uh, it is media. And, and what you do is shaping. Uh, this character, this new uh, Greek we're American character. We're characters. pioneering, and it's very difficult because a lot of the older generation doesn't seem to understand. Some people don't like that we speak English in some of our shows. However, uh, I was doing English language news in 1995 for Antenna. So <coughs> what I'm saying is that English, the the, the awareness of English language programming to to 
bring out information to the rest of yeah. to of the world about Greece was has been recognized and and Greece has been trying to do it and Eric does it with an English language newscast now and yeah. we are trying to do it and the only reason we are doing it because θέλουμε να μάθουμε τα παιδιά ελληνικά. My Greek wasn't as good either when I was growing up, but um, we want the new generation to be Greek, to understand, yeah. what, to, feel who, to feel Greek, to be part, to feel part of uh, anything Greek, yeah. and we are Greek, and we are Greek language, and we we are Hellenic-based uh, information, but we would like uh, the new generation to get involved and Philippines, and it, we'd like Absolutely. to do it in English because a lot of the new generation doesn't speak Greek, and the Greek. Uh, the Greeks abroad have to send their children back. It's imperative to take part of the Ionian Village programs, uh, the foreign exchange programs, because this is what's go going to ignite their Hellenic spirit and their DNA, just like some of your students. Would you like to elaborate on that? Yes, I, I agree with you. Um, visiting Greece um, is, is a priority, is a major factor for continuity. So this is what I realized, that this generation that loves whatever is Greek, they don't know um, a lot about the Greek American community. This project that um, we're doing now, the Oral History Project, is to give a chance, an opportunity, to the people who have created a story. They are businessmen, they are, they are artists. And Manhattan. And Manhattan. Hell's Kitchen was yeah. full of the, I, I, the I first use, I, use a, I use a story as a symbol, yes. the, the community. It is a symbol. Because this generation enjoys the benefits of, 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 of this community. Before they came to story, they were in the city. <laughs> And then they moved out because they wanted a better life for their families. It was really hard times. I mean, they were hard times. They've so, done. Tell us some of the stories. Give so us some insights. I give the opportunity uh, uh, to give the direct uh, uh, narrative, the, their own experience of immigration, uh, the, the immigrant generation, and also I interview the offspring, uh, their, their, you know, their, their children, and then uh, we're going to see the, the continuity. Uh, if, if it is the language, uh, if it is food, if it is music, uh, the generation uh, gap, but uh, but it is a, a, a very good opportunity for for people who offer a lot to the community. So there are stories, there are, there are untold stories to be heard. And where can someone tell their untold stories? A lot of uh, viewers and, and younger generation might tell their grandparents about this oral project uh, and, and our viewers watching would like to get involved and tell their story. How can they get involved? First of all, they can call you. Uh, I hope... They're going to call me? Oh, you're giving me the task? I'm going to be I responsible? Hope, <laughs> I, ho I hope that the... Uh, LGBT, <laughs> LGBT, <laughs> LGTV will become the, the link we will. to, to, we will to disseminate be um, an information. Uh, I'm saying this on air right now because, you know, you've binded me to this now and I, and I want to do this project with you. We are going to accept phone calls. If you want to be part of this project, 718-726-0900, to get in touch with uh, Dr. Alexiou and be part of uh, this wonderful oral history project. It's going to be something that's going to last forever in the history of Greek-American migration. And we want to hear your story. Parte mas telefono, na lavete meros, sa to fantastico documentary that you made Dr. Alexiou because we want to hear your story how you came to America what you did, what time you lived 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 and your jobs 7-18-7-26-09-09-09 and we'll see you with cameras to make you a conference Also, we have a website so people can log on we have public access it is free uh, it is through Queen's College, the Department of Sociology, where I teach. And uh, they, all my contact numbers are there, so people can um, you know, easily contact us. Uh, and what do we do there? First of all, uh, at this moment, at this stage of the research, we're just collecting uh, the interviews. Of course, we need some time in order to classify them. So we're going to have um, focus groups. Uh, they're artists. They're the, the unknown uh, story of, of the artists. Uh, Dr. Alexiou, it's always a pleasure to have you, and we always love to hear what's going on with the Oral History Project. We hope it uh, will come to a wonderful closure so we can uh, review all these uh, great things that you've been doing all these years and then move on to another big project. But you're Thank doing you. something great for Hellenism, and we're happy to be part of it, New Greek Television and our viewers. And uh, Dr. Alexiou needs you, needs your story. So reach out and get on board the Oral History Project. 
Thank you again for being with us. And we're going to have we're going to hear more from uh, Dr. Alexio. He'll be back on our show. In the United States, we just have this conglomeration of all these different cultures, and I can't I can't ever identify with like you know what the culture is. But when I think back to being Greek, I mean I can list thousands of things off the top of my head. As open as I am to you know diversity of all sorts, I think the true way to maintain your Greek identity is to keep it within, you know, cultures and families and religion and these things to be alike is the most effective way for the culture to carry out in a very, you know, uniform and effective way. I was με τον πατέρα μου και την οικογένειά του μιλάω ελληνικά και με τη μητέρα μου μιλάω κινέζικα. Ήταν ελληνικό το σχολείο. Πήγα από δημοτικό μέχρι γυμνάσιο, πρώτη τάξη μέχρι οδόη τάξη, ναι. Και έχω και ακόμη φίλες που τους τηλεφωνώ και τους ρωτάω τι ναι έχουν. Και κύριε και... μιλάτε ελληνικά, αγγλικά, τι μιλάτε. Αγγλικά, επειδή εγώ τους μιλάω ελληνικά, αλλά συνήθω εκείνες απαντάνε στα αγγλικά. Οπότε, αγγιβώ. Είμαι Ελληνίδα και Κινέζα, αλλά θεωρώ τον εαυτό μου σαν ένα «ον» που με λέγεται που είμαι δέσποινα. Δεν θεωρώ τον εαυτό μου ή Ελληνίδα ή Κινέζα. Είμαι απλώς a human being. <Τι>